All right, I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> we got some uh, Block 15, and this is an IPA. Uh, it's called Fluffhead. <laughs> so uh, let's see what it says on the back. Fluffhead is a fruity, hazy IPA that balances a soft malt body with copious dry hop additions. Who knows how many additions, Mac? Flaked oats and English yeast produce a fluffy, round body, while generous late addition hopping with mosaic Chinook and Azaka delivers pungent notes of tangerine, papaya, and spruce. Drink fresh. All right, so you can see that on the back as well. Very cool stuff. Kind of has like a tiki, tiki type theme going. Let's go ahead and uh, crack it. Maybe. There we go. Crack it, take a sip. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that is nice. That's just like big juice, big fruit. Um, I, I don't get too much bitterness whatsoever. It's really soft mouthfeel. Um, but just big juicy flavors, you know what I mean? Mm. That is nice. <clears throat> All right, so we are going to be using some La Ventura from Grooming Dept, or as everyone calls it, Grooming Department. Uh, you can see, looks like maybe they uh, poured it hot and it was kind of still bubbling as it settled down, but a very smooth pour indeed. Um, this is the Kairos formula. And I'll show you that on the side. Four ounces. I got this at the Razor Company for twenty-six dara, and it's a. Uh, I have used Kairos before, although I think Mel, you know, tweaks things a lot. Not Mel, Mo. I think Mo tweaks things a lot. Just got done watching BBS Live, so <laughs> my uh, words are mixed up. All right, I got it. Load it up into the bowl here, and uh, you know what that means. That means that I forgot to lather off cam, so we're now going to audible into a lather on cam, which is <laughs> not what I was hoping to do, but that's what we're doing now. So we got this uh, old That Darn Raw brush, beautiful purple dyed wood on the bottom with a black top, and a... Um, Fanchurian Badger Knot on top, and I have no idea what version or what V number it is. It is simply an early um, offering from that darn rub, and it was it's definitely served me well. Obviously, I haven't got rid of it yet. It's never particularly been like the best bowl lather for me. But um, it definitely feels nice when you're face lathering or when you're uh, when I'm applying it to the face and painting. Definitely feels nice for that. <clears throat> but it's super soft tips. And on top of that, it um, kind of has just under medium backbone, which is fine. Totally fine for me. I notice a lot of times what my brush does is it kind of like, it kind of like absorbs all the lather and then I'm like, son of a bitch, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to get any lather here. And then I start adding water and I'm like, fuck, it's washed out, it's gone, it's not there. And it, this is like with, you know, the newer, newer soaps. But what I notice is, once I feel like the lather is, is gone and I done fucked up, if you add more water, <laughs> it kind of comes, comes to life. So I don't know if it's something about these uh, new age ingredients, but it's almost like they, they soak into your um, natural hair brushes. And then if you just like keep adding more 
and more water. Obviously, slowly, gradually. But it's like, once you think they're gone, you just keep adding more. And they start coming back. <laughs> start coming back and just something I noticed. It's worked for me. And so, it's kind of holding it all fucking jangled, but got some good lather going now. I think that'll work. Yeah, I think that'll work. <clears throat> so, the uh, Cairo Space is a tallow uh, formula. Like I said, I think it's been tweaked over, over time. But he has, I think he's reduced his bases kind of a little bit to Kairos, Nye, Fortis, and Luso. And uh, forgive me if I'm missing any. But those, you know, they undergo changes and kind of evolve. Although he doesn't put like Kairos 1, Kairos V2, Kairos V3, you know. He just kind of, just kind of um, keeps it consistent, and just calls it Kairos, even though it's been changed. He probably should put like V1, V2, V3, you know, as he makes tweaks, just so people know that things are changing, and they don't have the same expectations. Uh, regardless. This whipped up fairly easily. It did that exact thing that I was talking about um, in the beginning. As a bowl lather, it um, it kind of soaked up into my natural hair badger brush here. And then as I added more and more water, it kind of uh, sprung back to life. So it's almost like I face lathered in my bowl. <laughs> that lather that's kind of hiding out back there so the scent on this for me I think it's just under medium uh, unfortunately it's a fairly pleasant scent uh, I like it it's got this um, kind of lavender mid or lavender top I'm not really sure but it's definitely I would consider it a lavender um, forward fragrance but there's a lot of other supporting notes going on that's one of my beard hairs not a badger hair um, got a lot of other supporting notes going on we got lime grapefruit high elevation lavender uh, galbanum saffron a resin accord Texas cedarwood oak moss birch tar and patchouli I wouldn't consider this a funk boy scent. Is that another beard hair? All hell's breaking loose. I wouldn't consider this a funk boy scent. It's a uh, pretty damn enjoyable. <clears throat> pretty enjoyable lavender scent. We got the uh, Mula, or Mula, um, R41 with the rose gold handle and we got a Wizomet super iridium blade in there fresh so let's get with it this is their pseudo open comb to me it's not really an open comb because it's like webbed you know what I mean it's like a webbed open comb or like a deep scalloped closed closed comb. I don't really consider it a true open comb, in my opinion. And that is just super fucking smooth. I gotta tell you, I know, or. I have been informed that 
the R41 um, was kind of toned down some years back, and it's not the uh, the beast that it once was. But I've ran a couple different blades through it now, and um, I would hardly call this a beast at all, uh, to be honest. It's um, pretty fucking smooth, to be honest. It, it still has good efficiency, but it's uh, it's not menacing. For me, not menacing at all. There is some blade feel, like it's not like, you know, it's not like it feels mild or anything, but it just, it, it feels smooth while shaving to the point where like I feel, um, you know, comfy, comfy shaving with it. Got the width of the grain down. The, uh, I guess the scent on it, it's it's kind of a mellow experience, you know. They, I don't think they jumped outside of the box or anything like that. With this one, it's, um, <clears throat> like, you know, lavender... Straight up lavender is said to be like, you know, good for um, making you relax and therefore it's good to use like right before you go to bed. And um, I would say this would be a good one to use right before bed. It's not a straight up lavender. There is some citrus top. It's not, you know, I wouldn't describe it as super bright, but it's there. Um, but to me, um, I'm, I'm mostly getting the lavender, maybe just a little bit of, um, the woods as well, the cedar wood, maybe a little bit of that resin accord and birch tar that are just giving it, you know, some depth. But mostly a lavender. And I'm kind of finding this with, you know, the lavender scents that I'm coming across is like, is there s some sort of struggle to make like an exciting lavender scent? Or are they just, <laughs> are they just all going to be in this realm of, that's nice. <laughs> I don't know. You guys... You guys tell me, do you know of an exciting lavender, or are they all just kind of condemned to this, it's alright, <laughs> um, status? I know a lot of people like the uh, Dr. John's Flowers in the Dark, but <laughs> I was offered that for free and I didn't keep it. I was just kind of like, it's alright. As fuck. <laughs> like, it's alright. It's as fuck. It's not... Not exciting at all. Oh shit, I'm doing it again. Oh yeah. Feeling very smooth. It's nice to use some of the mass-produced items from time to time and it's pretty uh it's pretty cool when those mass-produced items they just perform you know like they might not be the most uh shiny or fancy eye-catching although i am a fan of this rose gold i do like that they might not be the most eye-catching or, um, you know, the best shave-of-the-day material. 
uh, picture material. But they're just like workhorse items, you know what I mean? Like, they just, they just work. And they're mass, they're made readily available to the masses. And so that's a plus for the hobby, like, even if the, uh, you know, people that are deep in the rabbit hole aren't super excited by it. Got, looks like I got a weeper there. No, no blemish there. That's a weeper. Um, but yeah. Even if the super, you know, duper hobbyists aren't excited by the mass-produced items, it's nice that they will be readily available for people to enter the hobby. And it's nice that once they get these um, items in their hands, that they're going to work, you know. They're not going to disappoint them and drive them away from the hobby. They're going to work, thus holding their attention in the hobby. And that's a plus for everybody. Alright. I think we pretty much got her there. Looks like got that weeper. Looks like I got a... Oh, that's a blemish. It hey, looks like I cut open the blemish. So, not the... Uh, not the old perfect shave there, but I gave it the old college try. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and get those cleaned up with the aftershave splash. I'll say it felt comfortable though. The Wisdom at one of my uh, more um, highly ranked blades. I really like those Wisdom at blades. They remind me of my beloved Pole Silvers. All right. Get this lather off the face. I gotta say, I remember, I haven't used Kairos like a ton, but I remember having like a Mare, a sample of a Mare a while back. And I thought it was just fucking good stuff, like really good stuff. And this one here, I don't know if it's because of the tweaks that were made or not made, but whatever. It just felt like there was a difference in the experience. The lather was nice, but it wasn't like fucking, you know, super impressive like I remember it being last time, which in all honesty is months ago. But, um, yeah, it was nice, but it, it didn't impress me like it did before. The lather was very slick, but it didn't, I guess it didn't reach that weight and density like it did before. Last time I felt like it was like really dense on the face and it, it carried, it carried like this um, weight to it. And although I had a lot of lather this time, it just didn't feel like it had that same weight. It just kind of felt like medium density. I feel like it can do better, but maybe if it is truly, you know, different, then maybe it won't, <laughs> maybe it won't reach that level that it did previously. The density doesn't do anything for me, like, in terms of the performance of the shave, but I definitely like it being there. All I really need is the slickness, but that density, it just, just feels good, you know, having that, that weight. All right, that'll do. Set that to the side. We'll get some aftershave going. <clears throat> going with Murphy and McNeil, Barbershop de los Muertos. Awesome, awesome aftershave bottle. 
It's frosted glass, really nice uh, restrictor on top, great artwork, and a wonderful scent. This scent is definitely in a different category than um, the old La, Vin La Ventura. But um, but it's really nice, um, all in its own right. This one's much more cologne-y, much more bold and exciting. Whereas La Ventura, it's all right. I like it, but it's not blowing me away. All right, guys, that'll do it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and. Uh, Thank you for all the support, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.